Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to episode number 7 of Get Better at Yu-Gi-Oh! And today we are going to be talking about bluffing. So you're going to be able to, uh, you know, set cards uh, or make plays that will be strange to you, but you're doing it because you want to fool your opponent, making him think that you have cards that you don't actually have. So let's go over a few examples, and the first one's going to be uh, just a really quick example of a simple bluff. So, um... Let's say that your opponent has a Black Lost Soldier all the way at the beginning in attack position, and in your hand you have Quacky Mirror Guardian, a Space Typhoon, and a Block Golem. So the Block Golem is basically just to reveal for Quacky Mirror Guardian. So what I'm going to suggest you to do is not just set your Quacky Mirror Guardian or you can just set MSC that would just would not be the best play. What would be the better play is summon Quacky Mary Guardian in attack position and then set Mystical Space Typhoon. Because Rock Sun is a deck that um you know, they have a lot of good back row removal, D prisons, mirror forces, stuff like that, where Black Lotus Soldier might not just want to attack into, because he definitely won't want to activate his effect, because Quacky Mirror Guardian will essentially, um, you know, just tribute itself. So what you're doing when you uh, make this play, it's making your opponent think that you might have a back row that can destroy whatever they have on the field. So, uh, in this scenario, your opponent that has Black Lotus Soldier might not just attack, he might just simply just end his turn. If he would have attacked, yeah, sure, you'll be out of Quacky Mirror Guardian, and you'll take 3,000 points directly. Uh, but you essentially have that chance that your opponent might not do anything because he thinks that the Space Town MST could be a deep prison mirror force, something that will get rid of Black Lotus Soldier. Now, um, there's so many different decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, so you have to take that into consideration. Um, of you know, Rock Sun, for example, has lots of back row. Um, there's another deck that has lots of uh, good back row, uh, which is Gladiator to Beast. Now, if your opponent again has a Black Lotus Soldier on the field, and let's say you have Ready Art and Mirror Force, some players just might set Ready Art and they'll set Mirror Force. Um, now, Block Soldier most likely will end up removing uh, your Red Yari, and then you'll be out of card. Because, you know, Glads, again, they have a lot of good back row, so they might not want to, um, you know, just attack into it, uh, because it could be like a face down. Uh, Mirror Force, Deep Prison, another one of those decks where they have lots of good back row. But, let's say, for example, you summon Red Yari in attack position, and then you set one card. Now, you're also bluffing your opponent when you do this, because your opponent might think that this face down card is not a Mirror Force, they might think it's a Gladiator Beast War Chariot. Therefore, uh, if you summon Ready or Ari in attack position, your opponent might just think, oh, okay, you know, I'll just attack into him because why would he put Ready or in attack position um, um, if he does not have War Trade? So they might just go, oh, I'll attack into you. And at that point, you can mirror force them, and essentially, you kind of bluff them that way too. Um, but yeah, because because you summon Ready Ari in attack position, you know, face up, he's going to probably think that you have War Trade. So he'll think twice about activating the effect. So that's another way you can bluff your opponent. Um, another way to bluff... Um, is simply just to uh, hope your opponent does not MST the right card. So let's take, uh, for example, uh, let's say you're playing against Elemental Heroes. On the field you have a Scrap Dragon, and in your hand you have Heavy Storm, Dark Hall, and Dimensional Prison. So your opponent's field is completely blank uh, for this video, and let's say that you've got Scrap Dragon, you've attacked him directly, and let's say that they have one card in their hand. You don't know what that card is. Um, it could be lots of things, and you know they're going to have their draw phase next turn. And in their graveyard, uh, for this video, let's just say that they have two aliases. The other cards in the graveyard really don't matter. The only cards that are going to matter in this video are two Elemental Hero Neos alias. So they have their targets, essentially, for Miracle Fusion. So you know that. You, know, you don't know the one card they have in their hand. So I'm going to suggest you... In this scenario, um, depending on the deck that you're playing against, you have to remember that how many cards were used, what cards that they, um, you know, already went through, what cards have you went through. You have to all uh, take that into consideration when you're making these plays. Now, uh, let's say example for this video, you only have 400 life points, so you can't really take uh, another attack. So for this video, I'm going to suggest you to set all these cards, and um, let's just go through why you would you know, think about setting all these cards. Because first off, you can't take any more damage. If any play goes through, you'll essentially uh, lose. I know you do have the D prison for that. But the reason why I'm going to suggest you to set all three of these cards um, is because you don't want your opponent to lucky MST you. If they heavy storm you, and then they get out their play anyways, uh, you'll probably end up losing. Um, so that's why, for this video, I'm going to just say, for example, you can, this is just an example of how to, uh, you know, just bluff a whole bunch of cards because you don't want your opponent to like EMST. Because, again, if they have Heavy Storm at this point, you probably would have lost the game anyways. So, let's just say, for example, that uh, their one card will happen to be MST. Now they have basically a 1 in 3 chance to hit one of these back rows. And by setting everything, you're essentially um, making their chances a lot lower. If you set, like, a Heavy Storm and D-Prison, um, then you basically have 
their chances of hitting Deep Prison are essentially higher. So if you set the Dark Hole, which is a good card, and you might not want to set it against all decks, but, you know, in this scenario, you only have 400 life points. So let's say, for the sake of this video, that one card in their hand was MST. Again, if it's heavy, it doesn't matter. You would have lost anyways. So let's just say the one card in their hand was MST. Now, um... If you guys remember earlier, I said that they had two Neos aliases already in the graveyard over here. So um, that means that they could top deck Miracle Fusion. So if they have MST and then top deck Miracle Fusion, if they MST or D Prison and they Miracle Fusion, and they'll make uh, Elm Terror Shining, and that will be over the amount that uh, Scrap Dragon has, you'll take the damage because Shining will be at 3200 because it gets the boost. And then uh, if you guys remember, I said you guys had 400 life points. Uh, that will make it so Scrap Dragon will die, he'll take the damage, and you'll lose. Also, another example would be, let's say they didn't draw Miracle Fusion. Um, let's say that they, again, that one card that they had in their hand was MST. They top deck a Stratos. Stratos can then um, search out, you know, Bubble Man, and uh, they can special some, summon uh, Bubble Man because they have nothing in their hand. They can um, now overlay for, like, Excalibur and then just attack you, and at that point you lose too. So what I'm saying is, for this style of bluff, you're basically bluffing um, your other cards to make them try to hit them with Mystical Base Typhoon, or maybe like a Lila, they're going to just pop one, they're going to go for their uh, other card after, and uh, you know, you just can't take that uh, damage. So that's why you're setting all of them, essentially, to lower the chances that your opponent will at Mystical Space Typhoon, the important card. Because in this scenario, if you only have 400 life points, the important card to uh, you know keep on the field is going to be Dimensional Prison. These cards won't really do anything, because again, if you take any damage, essentially you would have lost anyways. So, uh, those are just some examples of uh, bluffs, and I hope this helps you guys understand some bluffs. Um, and uh, if you guys want to check out the other episodes, I'll put links in the annotation as well as in the description box below. And you guys can check out the other episodes of Get Better at Yu-Gi-Oh! Because uh, this is an ongoing series that I've uh, been doing. And uh, yeah, um, let me know if you guys have any tips for the future episode of Get Better at Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, because I think that uh, bluffing is, you know, something in Yu-Gi-Oh! Which is part of the reason why I really like it. And Magic the Gathering, you can't really bluff a card. Everything is kind of like a hand trap. And I think that this is really cool that you can, uh, you know, kind of bluff in a card game, because bluffing is an important thing in a lot of different card games, as you guys uh, know that played other card games <laughs> that aren't Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, but yeah, but thanks for watching, guys. Uh, again, if you want to check out all the uh, other episodes, they'll be uh, down below in the description box, and you can check them out. But thanks for watching, guys. Asian Eyes White Dragon, signing out.